mental health is such a buzzword right now, and the word depression has become commonplace in our lives. Experts say depression is a common mental disorder affecting more than 264 million people of all ages globally. That's right, Helen. It is also confirmed to be a major contributor to overall burden of diseases. Sadly, Justin, mm. um, we're told that women suffer more from this disorder than men. Hello and welcome to the show. It's today with John and Helen, and I'm Helen Ongma Odele. It's my pleasure. <laughs> And I'm Justin Academy. Many thanks for joining us. Okay, so this is the subject. This subject that we're talking about is a big worry to families, and it does touch every single person. So if you stay with us, um, we will take a short break. If you stay with us, um, we will tell you more about it. But first, let's take a very quick break, and when we come back, we will begin to unveil what all the angles that we have on this word and on this subject matter today. Depression, is it? Don't go away. We'll be back shortly. Depression is a particular mood in which someone can find this in myself due to so many reasons. So part of what can cause depression is maybe financial problem, marital problem, a lot of things like that. We are both in this country together. We know a lot of things that can cause depression to people. I think depression is a state of feeling less. I think it's a step below low self-esteem. It's a state of feeling like the whole world is against you, I guess. Okay, have you I ever don't been know. No, I haven't. I, I love my life too much. Love life in general too much. Depression is uh, a state of pro uh, in, uh, inefficient imbalance, um, unproductive um, psychological makeup. Okay. Have you ever been depressed? Yeah, at one time, of course, we live in a, in a this is a country, life itself has a way of pushing a, a lot of things at you that can cause depression. So um, depending on what we call depression, for me, I've at one time not been productive to my full capacity. So I feel that could also be a form of, I mean, a form of depression. Uh, depression that uh, will come to my mind, uh, as in people get a lot of uh, passing through tribulations, a lot of challenges in life here and there, uh, they could suffer a lot of uh, mental stress uh, and uh, frustrations that will uh, bring this, uh, what is called depression, to set into their health and that is the one that me, I remember. Yes, children can be depressed. They can be depressed from, from maybe from their teachers in the school or from their fellow child like them. I don't think depression has an age limit. I think anybody can be depressed. There are a lot of pressures among, among teenagers now. A lot of pressures among teenagers. The first is, about if, you, if you want to hear where the peer pressure is more, begin to see from teenage years. So you're welcome back. It's um, Today with John and Helen. It's your family breakfast show every Saturday morning. We take time out here to share um, some of the issues that really bother us, you yes. know, as long as it refers or concerns the family. Mm -hmm. And um, today we have a big one. But before we go into the nitty-gritty of our concern today, yes. which is depression, John, um, like I said earlier, for weeks, now, <laughs> for weeks now, the world has been like on yes, hold. You yes, know, because be like, of uh, the transition yeah, in the United States Will Trump go? Will he not go? Yeah. And if he doesn't go, what would happen? Yes. And eventually, Joe Biden is here. Yes. And with um, a lady helping yeah. him out Kamala eventually. Um, and I think that he's taking some very critical and quick decisions yes. obtaining most of the, uh, the policies of, of Donald of Trump. Trump. What, what do you think? Well, I think it's a little bit of a celebration because most Nigerians are saying that with the recent uh, travel ban that was overturned, that uh, this uh, uh, a breath of fresh air for Nigerians. But some people don't seem to agree. What do you think, Helen? Well, I, I think it's rather too early to begin to make a lot of um, sense out of it mm. because um, not too many people know uh, Joe Biden. Mm. We don't know. 
Well, we have an idea where he's coming from. He was in government yes, with um, Obama, mm -hmm. and um, a couple of nice things or good things happened to the world. But the position that America holds, you know, when America does sneeze, the, the rest mm. of the world catches cold. Of course. Um, that's, that's, that's what we think. And um, now Joe Biden is in. Um, so many Nigerians are happy. I, I've seen a couple of posts, you know, in the last few days okay. where... Their conversation, telephone conversations True. from Joe Biden to some Nigerian. Mm -hmm. And um, people are like, and I said, what does this mean? You know, the thing is that before uh, this new transition, uh, a lot of Nigerians uh, felt that uh, Donald Trump was not exactly what they needed. His policies were seen as um, extreme, mm. rather harsh. Nigerians are just believing that uh, with a black American as the vice president, we might just begin to see good tidings. The, the, the vice president office, mm. how, 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 powerful. how powerful is it? How impactful is it? Well, you know, it's, she is a woman. Never underestimate the power of a woman. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, so let's well, hope that um, Biden in office, mm. Nigeria, um, is, is good to go. We and, just want to um, believe so. It will help but it's, us it is still early days. In our own journey, because mm. we have loads of you know, issues here. To settle at back home. here yeah, at home. Yeah, I hope, I hope we, do, we do not. What's happening in America does not um, make us, you know, to begin to forget what is mm. happening at, yes, home. at home. You know. Okay. Well, joining the discussion to pay particular attention to depression in men is Timi Dayo Seriki, a founder, Man Up Initiative, and co founder of the Vision Group. Timi Dayo is a strong advocate on issues such as mental health among men and more. I was so glad that Timi Dayo is our first guest on today's show um, because. <laughs> Well, you will get to know why I'm laughing. You know, he is someone who's very passionate, you know, about all that concerns men. He says um, so much attention is given to the women, and so um, something happened to him at some point. And but he's I, 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 think, the fight. I think I share in his sentiments, really. We we'll uh, give so much attention to women. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, once again, thank you for Thanks joining, for joining us. Thank you for joining us, Timmy Thank you for having me. Good morning. Yes, good how's, morning. It, how's everybody doing? Great, as you can see. <laughs> All right. So, Temidayo, um, we were doing some searching, you know, and we found out that uh, um, you discovered that there's some gap, you know, there's some gap in the concern for men and, and, and the issues. There was a gap somewhere and it bothered you. Yeah. And you did something about it. Can you yeah. talk to us a bit about that? Yeah, I mean, when I finished university, I schooled out of Nigeria. So once I finished, I came back. And, you know, it was a very tough period in my life. So I was kind of in an identity crisis of some sorts. Mm. You know, what I had planned to do after school, I found out that I couldn't do it. So I came back not knowing what to do, not having any plan, and needing, like, guidance, needing help in some way. And... Um, I guess I couldn't find any help outside of the church, you know, and especially things that are directed to men, you know. So I would go for all these talks and conferences, which would help. But, mm. you know, while I was in church, they would always advertise, oh, we have a women's conference. We have a this for women, business, arts, all sorts of things. And I was like, wow, you know, what can I do for men? And there was only one thing. And I was like, come on, you know. <laughs> just so, something. yeah, literally just one thing. And then you, everybody was like, yeah, just join. I was like, nah. You know, so I literally just did some research to try and see if I could find something else, but I couldn't, you know, so, you know, someone, someone, I had just, I was having a conversation with my friends and with God and someone just told me, yeah, just do it, man. And I was like, okay, why not? So I did, did my research and that's, that was how Man Up was birthed. So whenever people ask me, I always say God gave me Man Up because. Man Up Initiative. Man Up Initiative, yeah. The, the, it's like a play on words, you know, because men are always told to man up mm. while we're kids, but it's told to us in a toxic way. You know, so we want to change the definition of what that means. Okay. So when we say man up, we're not talking about, let's say you're crying and I say man not up. Not the macho. Mm. Yeah, you know. Let's talk about that for one minute. Man up. There seems to be so much focus, so much attention, so much expectations on us men. guys, men. You know, why is that the case? Do you really think that has actually aided to this issue of depression among men? I mean, yeah, you know, like connecting it with depression, I think that's... Personally, especially in a country like Nigeria, I think that's definitely the biggest cause or the biggest driving force for the rates of depression in men and the rates of 
um, mental health issues like anxiety and, and so on amongst men. You know, like we live in a very patriarchal society, you know, so there's a lot of pressure on men to succeed. There's a lot of pressure on men to, to lead your family. There's a lot of pressure on men to, to you know, be, be some sort of driving force, you know. And these kind of things affect men in a negative way. You know, some people are motivated by it, yes, but some people feel immense pressure, especially when you compare yourself to people around you, you know. And these, these, are, these, are, the, these are the main drive, drivers for, you know, the rates of depression amongst men, especially in Nigeria. Okay. That's what I feel. Okay, following um, very closely to that, we are Africans. Mm. You know, like you said, the man is supposed to be the man and to act the man. Uh, would you say there's anything in our culture, particularly, you know, that makes the effect of depression more on men? Oh, definitely. I think that's, honestly, that's the key. Our culture is the key thing that has, I believe has caused this issue. Um, there's a lot of things, you know, one, we have all this pressure to be the man, whatever that means. You know, we have the pressure to be the man. They'll tell you, you are. Mm. Yeah, you know. So Can we break it you. down? What does it mean <laughs> to, be a man, to be a man? You know, does it mean that men should not cry? Men should not show some sort of weakness emotion. or emotion? So or what at, exactly? At Man Up, we always would say, you know, manhood is about leadership. And leadership is not, you know, autocratic. It's mm. not, I send you to go and do this. Leadership in service, you know. Okay. Being, being of service to the people around you and making the, the lives of the people around you better. And that is rooted in two main things, which is accountability and vulnerability. Mm. Wow. Vulnerability. So that, that is how everything we push at Man Up that has to do with manhood, that is all what is centered around. Accountability, vulnerability, and leadership. Making sure that everything you do you're being held accountable by your people around you and you're expressing, you know, vulnerability in ways that men are not normally, mm. you know, it's not, it's not normal, quote unquote, for men to express in mm. that way. And, you know, if we embrace that, things like depression, things like mental health issues, we would see that maybe the rates might not go down, but we'll see a positive, you know, direction. It will be, we'll be heading in the right direction if we're able to embrace vulnerability. Because going back to what you said about culture, our culture tells us, Essentially, it's, okay. you know, it, it, we have to go, kind of go back to the beginning because it's kind of seen as a bit of a taboo to have any kind of mental health issue. Whereas mm, yeah. Nigerians and us Africans need to understand that your mental health is just as important as your physical health. Sure. You know, the same way we're okay with saying, oh, I think I have malaria. You know, we would like for people to say, I'm okay. We would like people to be okay saying, oh, I feel like I feel a bit depressed or I feel a bit anxious or I feel a bit... Because that's the beginning of you getting better. So it's okay not to be okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. 100%. It's okay but just how, how? Just how can you really tell that you are depressed? You know, are there obvious signs, symptoms? I mean, just how do you handle a depressed uh, adult. adult? I mean, yeah, there, there are definitely a lot of signs. I mean, one, you would... I mean, there's some obvious signs. So you always want to be by yourself. You always want to be in dark places. Things like that are subtle signs, but then, you know, depression and anxiety and all of these things, these are all actually medical conditions which you can go and get um, professional help to get diagnosed properly. You know, I, I myself am not a medical practitioner, so I don't actually diagnose people and stuff like that, but MANUP have partnerships with therapists and with psychologists that we refer people to who can actually help you to, to you know, properly diagnose and use all, all the symptoms or all the the ways that you're feeling to tell you exactly what they feel is wrong with you. Okay. How, how old is uh, Menop Initiative now? How long have um, you Menop has been running for, this is the third year. How so. much impact? How much impact now? You said you're not a medical practitioner, but I want to believe that you've had um, some interactions with a couple of men yeah. or people or persons who have come down with depression. How impactful, how much of result um, are we, have, can we say we have you know, gotten in the last three years where you have come to, you know, rejig our thinking, thinking or, yeah, you know, like in this that. direction? <laughs> yeah, I would say definitely the, the, the results have been very, very positive, um, especially when it comes to depression because, you know, Manop tries to focus on changing the narrative around men in general, so not just focused on depression, but this is a very massive part of, you know, manhood in a way. So with regards to this, we've definitely seen a lot of positive results. Uh, we do something called Safe Space, which brings men together in a safe space to discuss, you know, things that men are not normally, um, are not typically 
okay discussing. So, mm. for example, mental health issues and things like that. And you know that that particular program, that particular program that we run, has grown immensely over the last three years. Okay. And okay. We've seen a lot of just a moment. I, I, quickly, I, I'm curious mm. now. Anybody who comes down with depression, are they likely to know? That'd you know themselves that something is wrong. Um, so yeah, I think it's two things. One, this is why we always say, you know, this journey of life you can't do by yourself. So one, people around you might notice. So it's always good to keep people around you who are looking after you, looking out for you. Mm. So because people around you might notice before you do. But then on the other side as well, we, we want all people to, to be, you know, just keep in mind the state of your mental health so you're able to understand when things are out of place. It's like when I'm with my physical health, if my leg hurts, I'm going to know immediately. Mm. It's the same way we want people to be as intentional about taking care of their mental, you know, so that if you feel like, oh, today I was a lot angrier than I normally am, or, mm. you know, you're able to identify that and then check it or, or just adjust it or make changes, you know, that would help you in a positive way. But sometimes some people just may be in complete denial. denial. You know, they just feel that uh, it's just a little more stress that I am undergoing at the workplace or maybe at the family level, and they don't want to see the fact that they are depressed. So what do you begin to do, maybe um, as a colleague, as a friend uh, who have noticed that this your friend is actually sinking down to this mm -hmm. abysmal pit? What can you do for Where him? Where can they go? Yeah, so with that, I think that's where changing the narrative comes into play, mm -hmm. which is exactly what Man Up tries to do. So with someone like you, say you notice someone who is going through something, be that, be that guy, especially as a man, you know, to another man, be that guy that says, bro, it's okay to be okay, to not be okay. Not to be okay. It's yeah. okay if something is wrong, you can talk to me about it, I'm here for you, that kind of thing. And subconsciously, that person would begin to kind of open up. And even if it's not to you, mm. that person might open up to someone else. And that's the beginning of that person's healing. So for us, we would always say to every man, be, be the change you want to see in a way, you know. Let men around you know that it's okay not to be okay, especially when it comes to mental health and depression, you know. And um, where people can get help, I mean, at Man Up, for example, we have therapists that we, we, we literally connect people with. So we, us ourselves, we don't, we don't offer that as a service, but we have partners who we, who we connect people with easily. So you can reach out to us and we'll definitely be able to help you. Or, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of, you know, uh, mental health and suicide watches. Mm that the government provide as well, mm -hmm. that you can actually just look up. Okay, lately, especially last year, you know, especially in Lagos too, we, we, we experienced so many young men, you know, not all of them, not many of them like having real life issues, like maybe poverty and all of that, because from some of the um, stories of a few of them who jumped, who committed mm -hmm. suicide, they were well to do, mm -hmm. having um, gainfully employed, uh, being gainfully employed never and, had all of that. They had and nobody issue. ever knew that something was, you know, so was going on so wrong with them. Um, my, my, my next area of concern is when somebody or a man in the house is this affected with depression, is he likely to be a threat, you know, to the immediate family members? And how does it impact in the general you know, the bigger society. Um, you might need to help me explain what you mean by threats, but from my understanding, I will just touch on what you is said Is there some level about. of violence? Is there drug addiction? Is, oh, you know, right. is there anything okay. that comes along with depression that likely... You know, yeah, I think, you know, before I even go into, get into that, I'll just kind of address what you said about people jumping and, you know, people that you might not have even noticed that they had issues. issues. Mm. You know, do, these things... Um, we live in a very materialistic world. So people, a lot of people imagine that because you have a lot of money, it's impossible for you to feel mm. like you're depressed. Because you have a good job, it's impossible for you to feel. But, you know, it goes, the state of your mind goes beyond. But the beyond. rich people get depressed. That's an uh, aside. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I would say that I know a lot of people who mm. you would say are well off, who mm. have definitely battled with some sort of mental health issue, especially when it comes to depression. A lot of baggage. We, we, yeah, yeah, you know, there's there's the a lot of things that come with it. And for us to properly you know, address it, we have to kind of break free of this materialistic mindset that, oh, okay, if I have a good job means that there can't be anything wrong, everything sure. seems fine with you, you know, because those kind of thinking stops us from checking up on people. Mm. We need to always make sure that we're intentional mm. about checking True. up on your friends, your dad. Because we're so busy these days, yeah, everyone exactly. is just in their own space. Exactly, you know, but then when it comes to, you know, your immediate family and the, and the threats, I think 
that is definitely very real. And if you look up, you know, symptoms of some of these mental health issues that are out there, you'll find that violence is one of them. Okay. You find that drug abuse is one of them. Even sex abuse, sex addiction, all okay. these kind of things, they're, they all tie into, you know, the state of your mind. And that's why it's so important, just as important as your physical health is, we feel okay. like your mental health is. But just how do we begin to make our men, our young boys, uh, be more expressive to talk about issues that concern them? Oh. Sometimes they I go through a lot of um, peer pressure, yep. be they teenagers, even men at work. You know, societal expectations here and there, sometimes they cannot even meet their own immediate needs and they're just bottling all of these emotions okay. inside. Just how do we begin to make them talk more so they can be expressive, so they don't fall down into depression? Yeah, I love that question. And for us, this is something that's so important, the impact that we have on boys especially, because those are the men of tomorrow. Mm. And we feel like it's so important that if you want the young boys now to have these values when they're older, you have to start teaching them now. Sure. It's, not, it's not possible for a man, a young boy you see crying and you tell him men don't cry or you tell him to man up. Mm. You know, and and you expect him when he's 30 years old to tell you everything that he's mm. feeling. It's not going mm. to be possible because he's been brought up, you know, taught that as a man, I have to deal with it myself. I have to be internal. Mm. I have to internalize everything and keep it, keep it in. And those are the kind of traits that a lot of us, even people my age, were brought up on. And those kind of things translate into schools. It translates into your friendship groups. So for us, as me, my, me myself, as a brother, mm. you know, to, to, young, to young, younger brothers, it's always so important to make sure you are telling them these things are okay from a young age. Let them understand that from the age of 10, I can cry and it's not a girl's thing to as cry. As early as 10? Yeah, as early as, as early as possible, in my opinion. As mm -hmm. early as they can start talking, in my opinion. Mm. You know, help them to understand that there's no such thing as, oh, crying is for girls, not crying is for boys. Cooking is for girls, not cooking is so for boys. So men can cry, actually. Yeah, you know, let them understand. Human cry. beings should cry. Okay. Yeah. Help them to understand that. You know, vulnerability is a human thing. Mm. It's not a man or woman thing. Like, as, as human beings, you, me, Helen, we all need to be able to express levels of vulnerability. And, and our girl children are brought up, you know, they're taught that it's okay to do that. Mm. But men are not. Our young boys are not. So we need to make that change now and start teaching our young boys that, look, it's fine. So ask your brothers, oh, how's your mental health today? Are you okay? You know, I hope, you know. And if you see them wanting to cry, intentionally tell them you can cry if you want i'll give you 10 minutes to cry if you want you know things so like they that shouldn't be stigmatized yeah literally just tell them exactly we need to break that stigma just tell them yo you can cry if you want you know take some time and whatever we're talking about can wait for five minutes get mm. it out mm. let them be used get used to expressing whatever it is and then that way those are the values that they grow with mm. you know you, you can't expect someone who has been brought up, taught one way to suddenly change immediately. All of a sudden. Mm -hmm. You know, incidentally, the family is so vital you know, yes. to, <clears throat> to the final results of yeah, the society. 100%. But the family is breaking down, you know, somehow for various reasons. Um, that family tie, the strength in the family is breaking down somehow. And um, that's why we have so many of these things coming up here and there. In the last um, five, six weeks, we've talked about family issues. And at the end of the day, we have been stared in the face with the fact that families must give support. Completely. Family members must give time, sufficient time. You just said it, that if a sister finds a brother who is feeling, come, let's talk about it. If you mm -hmm. feel like crying, you know, that's giving time, that's paying attention. And the family support, we cannot under over Estimate. overestimated okay. would like to thank you so much thank for the work that no we do we will keep calling on you from time to time because yeah, this do. is an area that you know interests us a lot um yes, we would like to kick depression out of our environment as yeah, much as possible um, with the men with the women i wonder why they say it's more with the women we haven't seen a lot of women committing suicide maybe yeah. it's not publicized that's mm, something maybe we don't have much records <laughs> Okay, so thank you for coming you so and we much. wish you the very best. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll take a quick break at this point and then we return shortly on the program. Please stay with us.